Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Track A, Moving to a Modern Data Architecture. In, I'm Frank Cervone. I'm the moderator for this track. And in this session, we will have a talk from Jans Asman, uh, who is the CEO at Franz Inc. And he is going to be talking to us about graph neural networks and transforming AI knowledge graphs. And so with that, I will turn it over to Jans. <clears throat> Thank you, Frank. Um, so you want me to share my screen here, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Let me share. Can you see it? Great, yes. OK, okay. all right. OK, well, welcome on this uh, California morning here. Probably for you, maybe already in the afternoon. Um, so I'm going to talk today about graph neural networks in Allegro Graph. Um, and uh, usually I do my talks alone. Actually, I'm doing it alone today, but I had great help from a colleague of mine, Chen Yi Yi, who did all the graph neural network uh, work. And so I included him on this page. Um, and the next, the next slide. So what I'm gonna talk about? Well, first I'm gonna say a little bit about our company, France and Allegro Graph. And then I'm gonna talk why we even talk about graph neural networks? Yeah, what is wrong with regular machine learning? Regular machine learning is really well in general. So why graph neural networks? And I'll, I'll go into that. I'll show some uh, state-of-the-art use cases that we can find in the literature on the web. Uh, and then we'll start talking about how we um, apply graph neural networks for our own purposes and, um, well, and, and, and mostly uh, one of the things I want to talk about is that our use cases are kind of complex because we always deal with series of events. So we have to have graph neural networks that can also deal with temporality. And so I'm going to give you uh, two examples and some demos in Allegro Graph about how to use graph neural networks and how it's integrated in Allegro Graph. And then I'll talk about how you can try it for yourself with a, a Jupyter Notebook and a Sparkle import. Yeah, so that is the, uh, the contents. So then about ourselves, we're a company in, uh, in California. Our main product for the last 12 years has been uh, Allegro Graph, a semantic a graph database. And for the last seven, eight years, we've been helping lots of customers building their own knowledge graphs, where we have a special uh, um, modeling technique for that that we call the entity event model. And so we help companies uh, to build these entity event knowledge graphs, and we, um, we, we, we consult to help you actually set it up for yourself. There's a long history in AI and complexity and with healthcare um, and, 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 and many other domains. So when we started out a long, long time ago, uh, we were mostly in defense and intelligence. Literally every customer we had was in defense and intelligence because they were trying to figure out how to use graphs to connect people and organizations and events all together. Um, but for the last eight years, you see kind of that the commercial world uh, also got very, very interested in it. Uh, first, it was the life science companies, then uh, it was the, uh, the banks. And recently we do work for uh, call centers uh, or a big hospital, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so um, a lot of companies that we help um, but again, when I started talking, I talked about that we have this special technique that we use in modeling uh, complex enterprise data to make it way, way easier to work with. We call it the entity event model. Um, for example, think of a hospital. You might have thousands of silos in the hospital, but what we do is we made a choice to make a patient the core entity around which you organize everything. And then we look at all the silos and we take everything that we find there and turn them into an event. So an event is just a simple object with a, a start time and an end time, uh, a type, whether it's a symptom or a, 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 a test or a diagnostic or whatever else you can think of. And that greatly makes your data easier to work with when it comes to entity, uh, sorry, feature extraction for machine learning or doing queries. And, I'm not gonna talk about it today, but we have done this model with many big enterprises. We worked on telecom use cases where the core entity 
was uh, obviously the telecom customer. And I'm, I'll give a demo about a hospital in the Bronx where the core entity is a patient. Um, we're working with a big call center in Atlanta called N3, where our core entity is the customers that you're trying to sell to. And so we use it there as a uh, kind of an intelligent call center brain. And we even, for government contractors, we look at AV incident and maintenance tracking in aviation, where again, an aircraft is the, is the patient, if, if I may make that joke. So anyway, um, this is where we do most of our work in this entity event modeling and, and, and taking enterprise data and put it into simplified model. Um, and if you look at that, what you see that they all have something in common. And that is, you always want to know, okay, how do I classify this patient or this telephone customer yeah, or this aircraft? Can I, can I classify it in some way? And even more important, can I predict the next event? Can I predict if a patient is going to get in trouble or an aircraft might get into trouble or uh, what is the next customer, the telecom customer that is going to call your call center, going to call about, et cetera, et cetera. And then in addition, you want to understand and explain why your customer, the, 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 the entities did something. Yeah? So we do all kinds of graph analytics and machine learning to help with those questions. And they work fantastic. But because this is the world of graphs that we live in, we need a new silver bullet. And for the last two years, I think the, the most of the exciting things in data science has been this thing called graph neural networks. Now, just as a inter general introduction, why do you need graph neural networks? Well, if you look at regular ML, then you see it's almost perfect for Euclidean data sets, meaning everything that you can easily turn into a factor or a factor of factors, yeah, works reasonably, really, really well with machine learning. Then you can take grids like an image, a voice, a video, and turn it into a factor. Or you can take sequences of words, sentences, documents, but also other events like a call or vital signs in the hospital, et cetera, and you turn those into features, right? And then you can do your machine learning on it. And people have been working on this for more than 30 years, and it's kind of become astonishing robust, yeah? Even when the input to your machine learning task is very variable, it still can do it, they, they, they still have, well, they have figured out, yeah, to, to work with all these variations. So if, just if you look at an image, for example, you can have um, the same image on different places in your picture, or you can rotate it in very various different ways. Uh, the size might be different. You can do the elimination can change, and, and still machine learning will work amazing well for pictures. But we also do a lot of work with speech technology, and it's kind of also really uh, uh, interesting to see how even in it, noisy environments with a lot of uh, uh, other distracting factors, speech technology is getting better and better using regular uh, uh, machine learning, yeah? But machine learning, the regular machine learning will fail on non-Euclidean data sets. And, and, and in this case, read graphs, yeah? For example, what, and this is when I have to try to explain graph neural networks in the beginning, I found it kind of hard. I'm getting to the point that I'm now beginning to understand how to explain it. And this is just, for example, think of friends and enemies, yeah? So what if I try to classify a person or an organization or a gene or a company or a drug based on her friends and enemies and their friends and enemies, right? So, for example, take this picture here of uh, ISIS and all the parties that have an attraction or a repulsion from one to the other. And how would you classify, and, and what you see is that you might have attractions to someone that then has an attraction to someone else that's actually friends of this guy here, or vice versa. Yeah? So how do you classify each of these things here? You can't just, you have to look at your neighbors and the neighbors of your neighbors to really understand who's positive and who's negative with respect to you as the person asking the question. So, and the same thing applies to when I try to find a friend based on his friends and enemies and their friends and enemies recursively. Yeah. So this is for me the kind of the basic way to explain why you, you can't put this in a regular factor. It's too hard, yeah? Or, well, I hope you get the point that it's, it, it, it doesn't fit well with the regular machine learning paradigm. So 
summarizing, yeah, so it fails, for example, in knowledge graph, when you want to classify an entity or you want to predict the relationship between entities, when the context is really important. And the same thing, when you look at social networks and you want, want to find the shape of the social network or whether there are clusters in the social network, right? So these are the main tasks that graph neural networks do. And just think of social networks. You have a big social network. Everything is connected to everything else. How are you going to find a cluster by just looking at machine? If you just only look at the properties, yeah, the, not the links to other objects, but just the properties, then machine learning can be used. But if the clustering is based on how every element in the cluster is based in relationship to others, then it becomes a really hard task. And, and graph neural networks will help you with that. So there's many use cases. So here is uh, people use graph neural networks in biology and chemistry and knowledge graphs and natural language processing, social networks, recommendation systems. And if you go into detail, you'll find they always need no classification and graph clustering and link prediction. So here are the, the main kind of functionalities that you get with the graph neural networks. For example, let me give you some use cases from the literature and then I'll dive into our own use cases. But for example, you have this graph here in the social network. Yeah? Um, and you want to know, should there be a line between D and C? Yeah? Or should there be a line between B and A? So what you can do is you can take these two clusters apart. And yeah? now you have two little clusters. And the question is, is there a link between B and A or D and C? Well. With the graph neural network, you can look, for example, oh, hmm, does B and A have the same common neighbors? Well, in this case, you have three common neighbors, and these have zero common neighbors. You could look at the Jacquard uh, distance. It's a, it's a technique to look at similarity between objects, where you look at the overlap between the same kind of attributes and links. For this one, it's 0 0.6. Here, it's zero. You can look at preferential attachment which is a technique that, that kind of is a, a, a statistical version of the winner takes all. And in this case, the number is way higher than here. Or you can look at the centrality. Cuts is a, is a measure for centrality. And you see that B is pretty central and A is pretty central in this graph, whereas D is only connecting two links here and connecting two links there. So all in all, you kind of, Intuitively, see that well. There's probably should be a line between B and A, and there probably should not be a line between B and C. I hope this helps. Um, and then other use cases. So there's text classification. Now, if you have a, a text with, with the simple sentences, you could do basic text classification, and we do that all the time. Uh, Jans, we yes. uh, we lost your audio. Oh, that is terrible. Um, you're not on <laughs> mute in Zoom, but uh, so it's. Do um, you want me to plug in? Uh, when, when did you lose me? That's good. Oh yeah, yeah. I can I can hear you. But do you want me to put in um, another microphone? You you said it was really good earlier. Uh, no, you said you sound good. Uh, okay. Maybe network issue. Okay, so if you want to classify text, yeah, you can use regular machine learning, but. If the text get more complicated, like he is a true great goal scorer for club in England, and it's fitting that he's now the highest goal scorer for both United and England, it's, it's hard to classify the sentence because there's all kinds of interlinks between all the elements in the text itself. Yeah? So this is an area where people use graph neural networks if they want to do text understanding. And if you just look at a regular sentence, Normally, when people do uh, NLP on data, they would use entity extraction, where you want to try to find the uh, uh, important words in a particular sentence. And that works fine, it has great utility. Sometimes you go deeper and you say, use a uh, word to fact to kind of go with a window over your text and find similarities between several words and, and, and try to do predictions on next word. That works well too, but it's still simple. Whereas if you look at a complicated sentence here, what you see is there's all kinds of backlinks and forward looking links in the text. And again, you can get way more out of your sentences if you use, if, if, if you take into account that a sentence is usually a complex graph. Um, and then something that I found really, really interesting is 
where you do scene graph generation. Yeah? So if you, for example, take um, a picture here where a man is sitting on a horse uh, or here uh, someone, uh, uh, well, playing golf or here someone uh, playing tennis, you can take these pictures and the people can then turn them into a graph rep representation of sentences. Yeah? So you start with a simple picture and then you go all the way to a, a word description and a word graph of this particular scene. And the way people do that is kind of a very nice mix of uh, 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 regular machine learning to look at the individual objects in the graph and some graph analytics to actually look at the relationship between all the elements in the graph, right? Because that's too complicated for regular machine learning. And so you see that regular machine learning and graph neural networks work together to ultimately come up with a sentence that describes the scene. And then even more fun is you actually can write a complex sentence like there's a man throwing a frisbee who's the right of a man behind a boy on a patio. Yeah. And then they can go reverse and from this sentence actually create a picture like this. So again, something, a, a beautiful example of graph neural networks. And then a social influence prediction. That's another example where you have a, a social network and you find out that uh, a network friend you bought, say, a jacket. And then the question is, will we also buy a jacket, right? And looking at the structure of your graph, you can kind of predict whether or not that will happen. And this is already something that we do here at France uh, with the Lego graph where we look at enormous big networks of, of tweets and, um, and other social network utterances where we try to uh, use this technique to classify users in a network, but also try to find out why certain links between people are strong or whether links between the network are missing. Uh, this is more like intelligence uh, uh, work, but already very interesting to work on. Okay, so I talked about some use cases. Now let me talk about how we use this in our own uh, uh, work here at France. So I'm going to give you a demo of a, a graph neural network that's based on this article. It's called Recurrent Event Network, Autoregressive Structure Inferences Over Temporal Knowledge Graphs. Now you remember I started out by saying that most of the work that we do has a temporal component because we're working with events. So uh, this is a, a, a technique that we could really use. And they use it on several data sets, but the data set in this picture here um, is something, is, is in what they call an event database of the year 2018, where they got about 400,000 events where um, you had facts that consist of a subject, a predicate, and an object. For example, North Korea made a statement about South Korea. So that is one statement in the graph, right? So subject, predicate, object. And then there was another statement that North Korea made a statement about Donald, choice, uh, Donald Trump, where Donald Trump at the same, oh, sorry, I forgot one important point. <laughs> so people mix, there are events and events happen over time. So you see here is a T1, yeah, North Korea talked, uh, sorry, North Korea made a statement of South Korea and Donald Trump who criticized Pakistan and Iran. Then at another point in time, uh, Macron consulted Donald Trump, Donald Trump threatened Pakistan and Donald Trump praised the protesters in Iran, right? And so now the task of the graph neural networking is, okay, now I'm at time three, given everything I know about Donald Trump and previous interactions with Donald Trump in the world, who would Donald Trump at this time three threaten? Yeah? And who would Donald Trump at this particular point in time consult? So, the, so given the 400,000 events that happened in the database, can we predict what he's at a particular time he's going to threaten and he's going to consult with, right? So that is the, that is the task. And then um, a little bit of a summary and where you can look it up for yourself. So it, it were events recorded from, well, in 2018 till the end of October. 
uh, there's about 2,300 entities, where the entities we call them social political actors, whether it's a, a, a state, a person, a nation, a, a group of people. There's about 256 event types. Yeah, could be you accuse someone, you make a statement about someone, you uh, refuse to negotiate with someone, and uh, there's 256 of those. And then in all this 460,000 events that they collected. And then each event has a date. And if you want to know about it, I'll leave this in the presentation and you can look it up yourself in this whole article. Um, and then what did we do? Well, uh, for those who want, we can give you a Jupyter notebook so you can follow all the steps to create this particular graph neural network. But basically here are the steps. We loaded these events into Allegro graph using our entity event modeling. Then, and this is very common for every machine learning task kind of, is you add a unique number to every node in the network and every relationship in the graph. And then you collect all these node IDs and relationships IDs and the date yeah, that is new or that you not only do the, the IDs and relationship IDs, but also date, dates. And then you split the data like always in training, validation and test data sets. Then you define a graph neural network model and data set abstraction by using PyTorch Geometrics API that we integrate with, with our, uh, so Allegro Graph is deeply integrated with Python and in Python deeply integrated with all these packaging models where all these data, uh, these uh, data science techniques are integrated. Then you can start training the graph neural network on the training set. You take the learned model, start with Allegro Graph, and then we added some, what we call magic predicates to the query language Sparkle, you know, the, the query language for the semantic web. So you can actually, do queries on the database about things that probably didn't happen, but you can just query for predictions like it was a regular facts in the data. So for, for, for example, some example facts would be, um, actually, let me just go to the demo and let me do uh, fill this. So what you're seeing here is a tool called Gruff. Um, it's it's a, a visualization tool on top of our database Allegro graph, and I can uh, get some data. So I pre-collect it. And so here you see that this person in Thailand, um, Dingluk Chinawatra, this person here, for example, at some point consulted with the, this particular Thai party. So here you see these links here. These are the, oh, let me do here. So this is the from and the to. So if you want to read this graph as a network, yeah, or sorry, as a series of facts or sentences, then um, you can go here with a, a black line to uh, the, um, uh, sorry, you have to start with an event, yeah? And the event goes, Sorry, let me take a step back. Read the sentences. Sentences always start with an actor, and then the black line means that it's the subject of a particular event, a consulting event, and then the blue line means it's uh, this is the object of the consulting event. So the sentence would be, Ying Luke consulted with this party. At some point, Ying Luke made a visit to Japan. Ying Luke consulted this particular person here. Um, this is a person here, uh, or uh, Ying Luke wants to express us an intent to meet or negotiate with Teresa Mai. And I can push a button here and we get Mai here, right? Or I can use it for this party. Anyway, so this is kind of the, um, the, the graph that we have. You can see it's a complex graph and I can take any element here and I could, expand the graph, I could say, well, um, let's do a, we already have from, let's engage in diplomatic negotiation operation with, uh, this is the from, so let's say the two is this one here, the European Union, and of course then the European Union, um, can say go to uh, uh, well, 
accused of crime corruption someone. Anyway, so it, you can, it's a beautiful connected data set actually just for fun. I could just take the from and to edge. And I could say, is there any link here with, for example, this party here? And I can look and at some point, you'll find that there's a whole series of links. Yeah, so if I do this. So I've, because it's such a dense database, I've, almost everything in this database is, is, is connected, but let me just go back to the previous state, right? So this was the state. So I hope that makes clear how this data set, this event data set is a beautiful graph with data in it. Oh, by the way, one thing I forgot, and then every, every element has a date. So you know, every, every a relationship or event in this system has a date. Okay, so now let's continue. So the next thing is you want to do predictions. So let's take an artifact, let's get rid of this and let's look at Erdogan. So we, we see here a little um, graph where you see that Erdogan rejects proposal to meet or discuss or negotiate with Cyprus and the same thing with Donald Trump, yeah? And like I explained in the beginning when I was talking about that article, you want to then say, okay, so if this is the subject of the sentence and this is the, the verb, then who else would he not like to talk to? Yeah, for example, Cyprus, oh, sorry. Yeah. He doesn't want to talk to Cyprus, but are there other people that the graph neural network would predict that he doesn't want to talk to? So the first thing you want to know, how many people actually don't want to talk to Cyprus? Yeah. And um, actually, yes, I can. Let, let me do this. Let me take this. I can take this query here. I take this, these two elements and I turn it into a query. Oh, I already have the query there. Yeah. So in the database, I can say, give me all the people that don't want to talk to Cyprus. And I can run this query and I find that it's only Erdogan. And I could actually do the same thing for who doesn't want to talk to, negotiate with, let me see here, who doesn't want to, oh, that is the graph neural network. That's first, who doesn't want to talk with Donald? Anyway, just believe that there's also only one person that doesn't want to talk to Donald. But here's the thing, I can now ask the graph neural network and I can do a query. So I say, given the event 307250, let me go back to the graph here, or control Z, let me go back to the graph. I said, this event, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you see that this is event 307250, and this is event 20378, this is the refusal to talk to Donald Trump. So just let's, we take this event here in the query view, and we say, given that we have an event where the, the subject is Erdogan and the object is Cyprus, who would we predict that also do not want to talk to Cyprus? Yeah, so we run the query and we see all the people that don't want to talk to, that the graph neural network predicts that they don't want to talk to, to Cyprus. And you see a whole bunch of people here. Fortunately, also we see that Erdogan is in that list. But it makes sense, right? It's all the Mediterranean countries that they're probably in trouble with. So, because now we can also look at who doesn't want to negotiate with Donald Trump. And then we take this statement. We say, who doesn't? So this is the event that says that uh, Erdogan doesn't want to talk with Donald Trump. And now we're saying, okay, give me all the subjects that also don't want to talk to Donald Trump. And I run the query. And then I find a completely different group of of people. Again, we find Erdogan, but also North Korea, Kim Jong-un, uh, and, and lots of other people that it thinks, now, is that correct? Um, but this is explainable given the graph and all the other things that somehow people at some point didn't want to talk to Donald Trump, right? So let me go back to my presentation. Um, where is my presentation? Oh, this one here. No, that's not it. No, this is the, oh, here's the PowerPoint, yeah. So, um, so I showed you a query where the 
the graph neural network. Oh, actually, what I forgot to tell this this predicate that I showed you. Uh, like predict subjects or predict objects. That's actually what we call a magic predicate. So it doesn't really look in the database, but when Sparkle sees this particular predicate in the query, it says, oh, I have to call the graph neural network to actually do the prediction, right? Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. So anyway, if you want to summarize what the graph neural network does in this particular case, then basically we see that we have a semantic reasoner that, we, well, if, if you compare it to a semantic reasoner, then what you see, that a semantic reasoner creates additional knowledge and facts based on logic inferences. So you can think of a graph neural network as a probabilistic inference engine that takes a fact and then based on that fact says, okay, what else can I say about the subject or the object of this particular fact? I hope that is clear. Um, and then I include these slides in my presentation so you can look at a uh, slower speed later what I was doing. So we, we do the same thing here. And I show, explain that the, there was on, that Erdogan only doesn't want to talk to two other people. Um, and I give you the results of these queries. So I can just skip this. Uh, here we can find the people that don't want to talk to Donald and not to Cyprus. Uh, but I already did that in my demo. I just leave it here so you can look at it slower later. Um, and then uh, concluding for this particular demo. Um, so we'll make available a Sparkle endpoint and a Jupyter Notebook. So with the Sparkle endpoint, you just can go to that endpoint and uh, click on graph in the browser. So you can actually see the same user interface that I just showed you without having to install anything. And then you can do the type of queries that you see in my presentation. And then you can play around with that event graph. It's really, really fun to, to look and see all the geopolitical uh, uh, relationships between all the, the entities. And we'll have Jupyter Notebook available on that same machine. So if you want to ask these graph neural network queries, you can use that too. And you can see how we uh, created that uh, graph neural network. Okay, so how much more time do I have to talk? We okay. have about eight more minutes. Okay, then I'll just go in three minutes through uh, another thing and then we'll open up for questions, right? So, um, so we're using now also this graph neural network in the medical domain, um, and we're right in the middle of it where, for example, we can, we already know for about 2 million people, we have correlated every symptom with other symptoms. So we can already ask the database that if I have allergy to peanuts, give me the top five other diseases that are highly related to that. And I can look at that and I find a series of symptoms that are very highly correlated with uh, with peanut allergy. Yeah? Dermatitis due to food taken internally is 210 times higher. And I can display that in the graph. Here you see allergy to peanuts is highly correlated to these diseases here. I can actually even ask how are these diseases that you see here related? Uh, well, are there co more connections between these uh, uh, symptoms here? And let me just show you that you can actually look at those connections and I'm not gonna do it in the demo, but that will take too much time. Um, and then you'll find a much bigger network that kind of is a statistical graph of how symptoms fit together in a large data set. But I can do the same thing also with a, a taxonomic relationships. So here is a huge knowledge base that we have about every disease, drug, side effects, a clinical trial that you have. And you can start with these diseases again and kind of link them up to these taxonomies and then you see the whole taxonomy tree. and you see kind of the knowledge infrastructure around all these diseases and how they all fit together in the graph. Um, and you can even do it both together. So we know an enormous amount of what symptoms go together and how are they related in the space of, of taxonomies and ontologies that we know in the life sciences. And then we can turn that again in the, into a graph neural network, right? So, and again, I don't have much time to talk about what we're doing there, but we can, uh, um, we, so we already are pretty good in saying, okay, if you have these symptoms, then you will get these top five other symptoms, but by using graph neural networks, we're now making our predictions way, way better. And again, I'll report about that in a conference somewhere later this year, 
but it's uh, very exciting to see how this helps us in making better predictions in healthcare. Um, and then the kind of queries that we now can do is where we say, well, select the next disease and the chance of that disease where there is a particular patient here and find the next disease, which is the magic predicate, and then give me the disease and the chance back. Yeah, and then or, or the by descending chance. And then here we find that given a particular patient, the next disease might be these particular symptoms with the chance that they actually will happen. And then the summary, uh, if you want to use this in your kind of work, please call our writers and we will get you going with the graph and graph neural networks. And I can tell you it's really fun to work with this new technology. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you. So Frank, any questions for me? Great, Jans, thank you so much. Um, we do have one question as to whether you can post your slides to feed loop. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. And um, I'm wondering, so the example that you just provided to us uh, in the clinical health care domain, have you worked at all on any projects that incorporate this technology into like clinical decision support systems used oh, yeah. at the point of care? Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, uh, that entity event model that we talked about is in production. It's used for many, many different applications, right? And okay. the cool thing is you, have, you need only one entity event data lake or, or knowledge graph that will feed many, many different types of applications. And some of them are in production since 2017. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And this graph neural network is not in production yet. That is the, the hottest research that we're doing right now mm -hmm. both for medical um, and for other, other domains. Great. Fascinating. Um, I certainly look forward to seeing how that uh, works in uh, clinical applications. Yeah. Um, it looks as if uh, those were the only questions that we have at this point. Uh, so I'll give a second for folks to uh, enter in anything that they may have. Um, but I would also uh, echo what Steve just typed into the chat is that Jans will be available uh, in the networking pavilion. So if you go in feed loop over to networking and then select groups and then select track A, uh, we can continue the conversation until the top of the hour when we have our next session. So if there are no additional questions, then I would like to thank you. Jans, for this okay. presentation. Really, really fascinating. Yeah, I would say so. Let, let me find yeah. that feed loop link, right? <laughs> okay, that sounds good. So if folks want to head on over to the uh, networking room, uh, that'd be great. And uh, Jans will be over there in uh, a little bit.